morning to everyone. I'm Giovanni Tonin. I'm from Carel and uh, I will present to you our high efficiency solution for condensing unit with BLDC compressors. The HVAC and refrigeration world is subject uh, nowadays to several regulations that are regarding energy efficiency and low GWP refrigerants. If we look uh, to the condensing unit more in detail, we know that uh, in Europe we have Eco Design Directive that is fixing some limits uh, in terms of energy performance, uh, especially at partial load. These limits will become especially stricter starting from 2018. And something similar is also happening in the US, where we have the DOE regulation that are affecting not only the condensing unit, but also the full refrigerated system, including also the evaporators. Speaking about refrigerant, we know very well about the gas regulation. So in Europe, we will have a limitation in terms of GWP with a limit of 2,500, starting from 2020. Something similar is happening in the US with a SNAP regulation. So US is listing the refrigerant that will be not more acceptable starting from 2018. Something very similar is happening also in Japan with similar rules with Europe, so on the GWP, but will be also stricter compared to Europe and China is defining their rules, but will become on the will will have the same strategy, reduce the emissions. So if we look to the current scenario of condensing unit uh, we divide by GWP and performance, we have that the largest part of condensing unit are still HFC condensing unit. Many of them are still on off with on off technology, so very high CWP and the low performance. The market is increasing the performance using modulating technology, but still with very high CWP using HFC refrigerant. So what Karel has presented two years ago in the market was a solution using BLDC compressors, but will increase a lot of the efficiency, especially at partial load. But what today Karel is presenting at Chilbenta is a new solution including that is using natural refrigerant as CO2. So we put together DC inverter technology with CO2 refrigerant. Especially in this segment, uh, the current condensing unit uh, were condensi are condensing unit coming from a rack experience. So units very big, heavy, and also the cost of this solution are is quite high in terms of production, logistic, maintenance, installation. So with the DC inverter, we can find a solution more in line with the condensing unit market, very efficient at, at partial load and using green refrigerants. So if we look at the application, in the commercial refrigeration, the big supermarket and hypermarket are already using CO2 as a standard, especially in Europe. So the booster system is what we find normally in the big format store. Experience of installers and also the knowledge of installers is increased a lot, so we have no more barrier on the use of CO2 also from a contractor point of view. And also the retailers are implementing more and more green policy to reduce the carbon footprint. So with this kind of solution, we can extend also to smaller format the CO2 and in particular, convenience store and petrol station. And we know that this kind of format is the one that is increasing more and more and will increase also in the next year a lot. Looking more in detail to the current solution, we have an ecosystem that focus on four main pillars. One is energy efficiency, thanks to the use of DC inverter. So very low operative cost, and this will be the final benefit for the end user. Innovation suitable for all, because we are promoting a solution that it is a complete solution, very compact and ready to be installed. Food quality, because we have no downtime of the unit, we have a full control of the compressor envelope, software feature for oil return, and so on. So we try to keep 
always the unit on and regulating with very high stability and efficiency. And at the end, the connectivity. So we have several systems that can be connected to this kind of unit, giving a monitoring system and giving the possibility to optimize the system and to make preventive maintenance. So we go, more, we go now more in detail regarding the energy efficiency. The first point for energy efficiency is the use of DC inverter compressor. So we know that uh, normally one refrigeration system is working for the largest part of the time at partial load and more in detail between 25 and 50 percent. So it is very important to have a solution that will be efficient in this area. And if we use on-off solution or modulating solution with a very narrow range of modulation, it will be difficult to reach the nominal efficiency. So using the BLDC technology, we, we have normally a range of modulation that can go down from 15 up to 100%. So we can fit exactly at each condition the best uh, performance. But together with the DC technology, we are focusing also to the regulation. So we have several dynamic set point and the logic that uh, optimize the full system. Starting from the most common transcritical cycle management, we have also a modulation and an optimization of the low pressure side. Starting from the evaporators with the smooth line function, going to the condensing unit with a floating suction and modulating at the end the compression speed. So the first point to optimize the high pressure stage is for sure to work with a dynamic set point on the high pressure stage and in transcritical operating condition we normally optimize the COP of the full system. And we move down to the subcritical operating condition looking to the subcooling and fixing a limit of subcooling. Moving between this condition in a, with a smooth transition. What is new with ecosystema is uh, to work uh, on the low pressure side, uh, starting from the evaporators. So normally the evaporators in this system are equipped with electronic expansion valve. And we implement a function that is called a smooth line. So when the temperature of the cabinet is reaching the set point, uh, we avoid uh, to switch off uh, the regulation. And we increase uh, the superheat set point. So we have a dynamic set point, a dynamic superheat set point inside of evaporators to avoid the on-off cycles and modulate the flow of refrigerant inside of evaporators. In this way, we can have also not only energy efficiency, but also after a certain time, a stable regulation when we reach the equilibrium, and we can need also less defrost at the end. This information from the cabinets are affecting not only the set point of the evaporator, but are affecting also the set point of the condensing unit. Because in real time, we are communicating which is the request of each cabinet, of each cold room, of each showcase. And we are evaluating this request according to the cooling capacity. So we make some logic inside of the main controller of the condensing unit to optimize and to move the suction pressure set point between a minimum and maximum value. This set point will be followed very well by the compressor, that is a DC compressor, and that have a very wide range of modulation. So at the end, also the compressor will avoid the run cycles. If we look to seasonal performance, when we work on the high pressure stage, we are optimizing according from the different external condition. The low pressure side instead is very effective, especially between the night and day operation. So what at the end will happen, so it will be a reduction of the compression ratio, and at the end, a lower compressor speed that will be more efficient, and a minimum as possible refrigerant flow rate through weight exchanger, but will increase the efficiency also of this device. So we are speaking not only about uh, the technology of the compressor, but we are speaking about a full system, including also the cabinets, condensing unit and cabinet, that are implementing 
dynamic set point and advance the logic to keep always in modulating all the devices. Looking more in detail to the system, we say innovation suitable for all, that mean high usability of this system. Because we have only one controller that is driving directly the compressor through the inverter power plus. And we have two electronic expansion valves that are driven directly by the main controller to manage the high pressure side and the flash gas. So at the end, we have a full system in a compact equipment, but it is already fully integrated and also ready to use. We have several trials, several trials ongoing in Europe that are confirming this solution. But when we speak about usability, we are not speaking only about the uh, usability for OEM, so an easy solution to implement, but also usability for the contractor and for all the people that will work with this kind of solution. So we have advanced the user interface with a clear menu where it will be possible to configure and to change all the parameters and to understand the behavior of the unit and to have also alarm notification and so on. And we will have guided the procedure to configure not only the unit but also the full system. So we will have or wizard procedure or also automatic procedure to set some defaults that are optimized coming from current experience. These defaults are for sure reducing the commissioning time, but will be all of these parameters can be adjusted by the installer. Another pillar of the solution is the food quality. So we have a solution that is extremely reliable because we are not only simply managing the compressor, but we are managing all the aspects of the compressor, starting from the envelope. So Carl normally qualifies each compressor and will test each compressor at all the boundary conditions of the envelope to find the best electrical parameter to manage the compressor. So inside of the software, there will be a list of compressors available and just selecting that compressor, everything will be ready and, uh, for the use. So no, any adjustment of parameters here is required by OEM or by uh, installers on field. Together with this, we have also advanced the oil return feature. We know that with the BLTC, BLTC solution at very low speed, we can face uh, oil return issue. So we need to guarantee from a software point of view some procedure that uh, will recover the oil when it will be necessary. One of these is uh, the oil speed boost, but it is the most common function for the oil recovery. But since we have a full system, including also the, the cabinets, we can implement also a washing of the showcase, opening the valve of the evaporators time by time and washing the oil that stock in the evaporators. Moreover, Food quality means uh, that the product temperature it is very stable. All the aspects uh, that we have seen before for efficiency are affecting also the food preservation. So compared to a, a traditional system where we have on-off cycles and we have a frequent and wide variation of the food temperature, with this solution, all the devices will reach an equilibrium starting from the compressor speed to the opening of the valve, arriving at the end to the product temperature. This will increase the food preservation. The last point is the connectivity. Connectivity is mainly referred to the service company because it will help and it will simplify the maintenance activity. So for this kind of solution, we think that Carrel, the best Carrel product to put together is Terra. That it is a box that can be in two options, GPRS or uh, Ethernet, that will help to monitor each system, to optimize the working condition, and to plan preventive maintenance activities. It will be possible to enter in the system through several devices, starting from the smartphone, the navigation, it is uh, simplified with custom maps and graphics, and the trends uh, will uh, help a lot to understand the system behavior in case of failure or in case of uh, 
high energy consumption. So here we have the tools to understand the well how to optimize each single system. But it is not only important to optimize and to look at the single system, it is important also to compare several plants in order to understand which are the best and which are the worst and when, where we need to implement some activities. So we have some BI tools that implement energy dashboard to understand which, is the, uh, which plant is consuming more. We have analytics for optimal food preservation. We have centralized alarm, alarm monitoring. And we have a remote, at the end, a customized interface to help the navigation inside of these tools. So what we can say is that CO2 DC inverter is available in the market now. We can reach a considerable energy saving results to, thanks to the DC technology that is working at the, at the, always at very good condition, especially at partial load. We can say that both efficiency and the refrigerant regulation can, can be achieved using the DC inverter technology with natural refrigerant as CO2. We can reduce the downtime of the system thanks to the full envelope management. We can say that also the food preservation we can reach the optimal results with stable product temperature and that will be available a wide range of supervisory system for monitoring, optimization, and for planning the maintenance activity.